multi-family returns on a single family. It can be. Ooh. Hello, hello. Hi there. How are you? Thank you, my man. How you doing? Good to see you again. Fucking tenant left all their shit everywhere. It's a gift. Got him out. Time to make more money. Oh, yeah. Terrible. I bought the property with the tenants in there, and they're paying like 1500 bucks a month, mm -hmm. and this is like at least 22 or so. Right. So they finally, I tried to pay them early to leave, but they wouldn't. That's the case. And so they stayed here, and their lease was up, and they actually moved out, surprisingly. Pad split, $6,000, $7,000 a month. Let's see if we can get you that consistently. Let's see what we have in here. That will be fire. All right, so we're here today at uh, one of my properties that we bought a couple months ago. We bought it with the tenant in place. The tenant finally moved out, and I've been trying to work a deal with Pad Split here. And I love their ideas. I just didn't have the right property for it. I think this is the right property for it. So I asked them if they could come out, take a look at the property, say if it is a good one for you guys, and what we have to do in the rehab process to make it, you know, maximize it for Passwit. So if you could tell us a little bit about what Passwit does and why I like it, yeah. let us know. So Passwit is really a co-living marketplace. And what we're really doing is connecting individuals that work in the workspace and connected with investors that are looking to get higher returns on their property. So we're maximizing the space in your property to create additional bedrooms to really bring you 2x returns on your property. Long story short. Nice. Yeah. So like I think the rent on this is like 22, 23, 24 maybe. But you said maybe six would be six, seven. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Even five. Would yeah. Be crazy, we're so. we're gonna give you three x on this. Let's let's check it out. I like it. All right. And like I know before, like you said before, like a parking is a concern. But you said on this yeah. one. So if we're talking exterior, this is fantastic that you're in a corner lot. So as a corner lot, you're not in the middle of the neighborhood. You're not disturbing any guests and any neighbors. With parking, you might want to go ahead and, and lay out some rocks so that you can have multiple parking spaces. The fantastic thing is that you have a house, two houses down that has uh, grass parking. So it wouldn't stick out as opposed to an HOA community. Gotcha. Yeah, and this is like a main road here too. So it's like, right. so it's like I and, uh, park right here. Every time I've been here, I've parked like on this road and so. And the other fantastic thing with the platform is that you set the limitation on how many cars can fit at your house. Okay. So then once you already reach your cap, uh, anybody else that comes with a car wouldn't be able to select your house as a property. Yeah, and I know like people are parking here and stuff. You can see like the drive. Yeah. So that's good. Do you guys have other properties in like this area or like? We have two that are in uh, Richmond Heights. Three, two, eight, one, one. And we have one in Castleberry too. Okay, so when evaluating a patch split property, we're looking to use that underutilized space that's not generating any type of money. And we're gonna go ahead and create a bedroom space into it. So this uh, dining room space, living room space, uh, would probably most more than likely be closed in. You would probably uh, frame this out and create a bedroom out of it. And this one room would generate you somewhere around $800, $900 a month. So that's why you want to maximize that, that empty space that you have. Uh, to make more money. This space over here already has a closet, so you have your washer and dryer, you have your double door, so what I would personally do with this particular this particular room, you already have your egress, you kind of already have a structure for a room, I would probably put a doorway here or frame this out so that this could go ahead and become a room, and this is another eight dollars $900 for this bedroom, that's and that's the base price. Correct. Okay. And this would be because it is a washing machine and there's a bathroom, this would be like a shared area. It would be a shared area. So you want to have for every four bedrooms, one public bath. Uh, there is a premium, about a $50 premium uh, for a bedroom if it's a private bathroom. Yeah. So you can, if you have enough bathrooms, probably make this into a private bath for this room. Or if you don't have that ratio for every four bedroom and one bath, you can then make this public for the rest of the house. There's three bathrooms in this one. There's three. Yeah. This is, this is fantastic, yeah. Okay. Um, every single room will need to egress this, right? So that's why that window or even this exterior door is so beneficial. You can also charge more because they have a private entrance. Gotcha. They want to come into the private door, private entrance, more money for you in your pocket. Like it. Um, so for me, because I, I, I walked this house uh, <laughs> yesterday when they left and mm -hmm. I got keys. For me, like I have like ideas of, like what I would do in a typical rehab. So I'm like, obviously, knock this down. Yep. So I always knock that down. Fast. And over here, I would, I would have opened this up, or knock one of these walls down to kind of open it up. Would that yep. also make sense, or? Yeah, it certainly does make sense to open up the space, make it more of a common shared space. We're really only having kitchen and bathrooms to be shared space. Okay. Right. Anything else, we're really not looking into that. Gotcha. Couches are problem areas. I don't want to see your friend drinking over the weekend. You don't want to see my girls night, you know, every night. We don't want that. Yeah. So we're completely eliminating that concept completely and okay. just keeping it just rooms. 
So maybe just open up this wall to like give it a little bit more room in the kitchen. So there's there's a little strategy to it. You already own this house, so I wouldn't know exactly how it would work, but the way that we personally acquired pad splits, we're kind of doing a burr method to it. So we're buying the house, we're rehabbing it, we're refinancing it before putting the walls up. We're pre-preparing the house to be a pad split. And then after we pull the money out, we put the walls up and then rent it. Okay. So doing stuff like that, like opening the kitchen would give you that, that higher value. Uh, you'll, yeah. you'll comp out a lot better. So I'm essentially in that kind of same situation where you essentially bought it cash with private money mm -hmm. and I want to pull the money out. Right. So rehab it as if almost I would without putting Correct. the wall up. Correct. Correct. And then after this, we get refinanced, then go ahead and the wall, walls. go to walls. Take your money back out. So the logic is while you're on your initial rehab, you know this is a hallway, this is going to be a hallway. Put some lights in this section and if vents, you need a vent in a per room. So with the vent, or if you want a light, you go ahead and put a fan in the center of the room. That's on your initial rehab. So all you have to do on the tail end would be put walls up. That's your cheapest roof part. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So see the visual. And these rooms where we're, we're gonna make it actually all have vents, so it's like yep. perfect. Correct. So yeah. look at this visual. This room would literally have, it will go from here to here. Yep. This is your enclosed room. Okay, yep. very large space. Now we do have a vent over here, so you do not need to move anything. But you do want to add that fan, that yeah. light there. Any any fixture, let's say this uh, switch right here, that potentially be controlling this one, we're gonna want to move it out. Move that out there. Move it out here because now this is gonna be part of this room. And so then, you don't want that. Okay, so I can maybe move a switch out here, Correct. and then move another one out there, Correct. 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 something like that. Whatever, I'll have the electrician do it. That makes sense. Um, and then this one, like, there's nothing we can do with it. It's going to be kind of... You do need dining space. Dining so a table. Okay. Okay. Um, Four-seater. Four-seater. Okay. So dining table, maybe open this up. This wall up only. You can open that up. Boom. New kitchen. That's but you can cool. also even add some people are adding, like, little bar stools for more of a, like, a workspace area as well. You can do that. You don't have to. Right. You know, something that you can do. And another tidbit on pad split. If it has a private entrance, you make more money. So with that in mind, you can technically put a wall all the way across this whole entire room, make this so where only one person has access to come into this one room, divert the entrance so that everyone comes in through the side, and then you make this into a single walkway entrance, Wi-Fi lock on the outside, we know who's coming in and out of the house, and this is now a more expensive room. A private area, two private areas. And you get higher money. Yeah, correct. And I, I see potentially the opportunity to have maybe two rooms in this space as well. You know, if you eliminate that, maybe you do a room here for that bathroom. That's potential as well. And then there's another bedroom here. Closets are not required. If we're converting, let's say, our living room, we need to supply that space with a dresser because we do not have a closet now. So dresser works perfectly because every room is fully furnished. What about washer dryers? The washer and dryer is going to be common space, so maybe kind of allow like a hallway over here where people can access this area. And there is an outdoor like shed area. I don't know if it has plumbing, but if it but does, if it does, it does could, move it over there. One big room. Private bathroom, you're winning. Okay. Um, other tips: your existing rooms already have the closets. You don't have to do anything. When it comes to the bathrooms, you don't need bathtubs. The reason why you don't need bathtubs, you don't want them to stay there longer. <laughs> These are workforce housing at the very end of the day. It's people who have full-time jobs. They might even have two jobs. So we put mirrors in bedrooms. It's not a requirement, but the mirror in the bedroom would have them get out the bathroom faster and go into their rooms and do whatever they need to do. And in regards to the bathroom rehab, I don't put tubs in our bathrooms. We do stand-up showers. Okay. So it keeps them in the bathroom a shorter time. Okay. Yeah, and sense. be mindful. You know, you're going to have traffic. So, you know, put some differences. So your property is actually gonna stay up to par with yeah. the occupancy. Yeah, we put good stuff. We have every. I know, I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. I'm not doubting that. I know you do. Was that the same? You know, you just redo that. Yep, Mo modernize that one. Uh, another good tip from one of our bigger clients here in Orlando. He adds mirrors to every room. I might take 30 minutes to do my hair. And now you've got to go to work and you're like, dude, I try to shower. So I can do that in my room. Yeah. So really kind of decluttering some spaces is very helpful. We personally add some mini fridges to some of our rooms. It just also decongests the area. And if I have like, you know, something that I, my mom cooked and then I just keep it in my room, it's, it avoids also more conflict. Yeah, so well. eating your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you ate my sandwich. <laughs> you know? So it's all showers. Right? Private. So no tubs to even worry about. Perfect. Okay. 
Okay. You're also going to get higher returns on this one because oh. you have a private bathroom. Yeah. There's a $50 premium compared to the basic room. So if your room is $200 a week, that private bath will probably add you another $50. So you're at $250. I will say though that being that we're not as saturated as Airbnb is in this market, uh, we have a property in 32805 that's rented at $270. 273 a week. Colleague, business partner of ours through Padflit, and it's 273 a week, which is being this location, I would suggest you rent higher. Yeah, 32805, this is like way better than 32805. Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. And imagine we rent by the week, we cash them faster when they're defaulting, right? Traditional rentals, they pay monthly. So I gotta catch you defaulting on your payment a month and a couple days after. You're not paying me on time on a weekly basis. I can catch you faster. We're gonna be, you know, actioning also faster, collecting oh. that rent. So they pay more on time because usually people either get paid weekly or bi-weekly, manage their finance and better. 97% collection rate on our tenants. With they, the are they like an auto pay or is it like... They have the options to do both. Okay. So obviously I brought you in early because I wanted to get this all figured out because we've never done business together. Yeah, of course. So do the rehab. You already gave me some tips. I, I know what to do. At that point, after I get it refinanced, then I'm going to add the walls. Add the walls. Then bring you in. Correct. And then you start right away. Right. So you're going to furnish those rooms. Furnish all the rooms. Okay. Okay. But it's not Airbnb finishes. Okay. This is going to be a bed, a nightstand, a night, a uh, night lamp, nice little picture, wall art. You're done. Okay. Do you have like recommendations on like queen beds in each? Is it like queen beds in each? So no. we have a, a actual tool that you use on the website and on the tool you select how many rooms you have and how many bathrooms you have. And then you can put the zip code in and then you can select different things of the room. So how, what's the shortest wall in your room? Is it eight feet? Is it 10 feet? Is it 12 feet? And based off the room size, it gives you a higher price. Based off the bedroom size, it gives you a higher price. So if you do a full size, which is our minimum, all the way up to king, that might be a $15 difference. If you put, uh, if you have a Jack and Joe bathroom, there's a difference in price. If you do a full bath, another difference in price. So you can preemptively work on what your property might look like on the tail end so that you can make adjustments accordingly. Gotcha. And so that's a free tool for our host. And then, I think you told me in the past, but I don't remember. Fee, what's the charge? 12%. Really, we do have an additional processing fee, so we add it to be 15%. 15%. 15% okay. of marketing, advertising, payments, collections, our technology, like we, we do uh, member to member. That's super fair. I yeah. Think. yeah. And paid marketing. Uh, with the paid marketing, you have Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and uh, TikTok as well as 60 different sites. So rent.com, Zillow, Roomster, uh, Zumper, so all those sites. You're doing the marketing or I'm paying we're for doing the marketing? We're doing the marketing. Do the it's marketing. all inclusive. It's okay. part of that. The 15%, okay, yeah, yeah that's super fair, okay. Any questions I'm not asking that I should be asking? Uh, what don't we cover? Physical items on the house. Your AC isn't blowing because it's too freaking hot in summer. We collect the ticket, you tell me who's gonna manage those physical items, you take care of that. Okay, yeah. You know, same thing. Yeah. Uh, we manage everything else, just not the physical items. Okay. Additional to that, the room rates. So the interesting thing about room rates, uh, a perspective, we all know Lake Mary. Lake Mary, we have one property that's on Short, Short Street, I believe, closer to 192, but past the target. Uh, so it's not in the nicer uh, HOA infested areas of Lake Mary. It's an older non-HOA neighborhood. Those rooms are rented somewhere around 220, but the investor themselves aren't taking advantage of the fact that they're in Lake Mary. His other properties on Governor, uh, Cricket, and um, Golf something, I can't remember what it's called, in, in Pine Hills, they're rented about 210. Yeah. The difference is $10. He has another one on Sexton that's on several and it's also somewhere around 215, 220. He's not taking advantage of the fact that he is in unique areas that should be higher priced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, I tell you that the guy in 32805 is getting 270. We have our own personal property in Jacksonville that's rented out at 280. So am I renting these? Because like if you say he's not taking advantage, like you set the price as the investor. Because you have full control on your pricing tools, okay. right? We guide you. We say, hey, Alex, we see opportunity in this price point. But you say, no, I want to do 270. That's fine. You have full control of okay. that. Yeah. Right, so we guide you. So he is one of our early starters in Orlando, so he was kind of testing it, you know. But right now, with four properties, he's generating 20 grand a month. Yeah, so he's most, like, most investors who are like, Hey, I'm, I'm getting paid, I don't want to raise my rent, it's fucking easy. It's, it's I'm making more money than I traditionally would have cared. Let's just keep yep. it going, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But he's profiting a lot 20 grand a month for four properties, yeah. multi family yeah. returns on a single family. Yeah. You can't beat that. That's, that's your ad right there. Multi-family returns on a single family. Single there you family. Go. You can't. You can't like beat it. that. All right. So I will say when we do our oh, onboarding, so after you do your rehab, after you set your house up, what's the onboarding process look like? Uh, before you're two weeks out, you're kind of talking to us, two weeks out of full completion. 
we're kind of guiding you. Hey, these are some furniture people we recommend. Here's some furniture items that you need to order. Uh, we'll prep you before you do your video walkthrough with uh, onboarding specialists. Our onboarding specialists, as of today, go through a video call with you and they check the egresses. Does the window open? Is there a full size bed at minimum? Is there two ways in and out of a room? Those are items that they cover, uh, but uh, we're looking towards making this process a lot simpler so you're self onboard in your house. That's not live yet, I'd say. But uh, you'd be utilizing us, or Anna or myself, to go ahead and walk you through this process so that you aren't obviously failing in it, that you are doing as good as our other investors are. Yeah, we are your free consultant throughout this entire process. Not to speak of any other strategy, but some, you know, we've had to pay for education for a lot of things. We are free to you right now. So take advantage because we'll start charging. <laughs> well, that's fine. Well, we're definitely going to start charging. Back common areas, some investors like to take some area, uh, some sections and say, hey, don't smoke in the house. We have these house rules. They have to follow the house rules. If they don't follow house rules, they lose a key. People self-police each other. So if we're all living in the house, I bring a guest very late. She smokes in the room. You're going to dislike that. You're going to contact Pad Split's 24-hour support. You're going to let Pad Split know that we're doing stuff that's breaking rules. We lose a key in the process. We lose three keys. We're completely off the platform. Where else are you going to live? That's $900 for a room, utilities included, furniture included in Orlando. Exactly. So because of that, they, they tend to follow rules a lot more. Uh, so one thing some investors do is they'll designate an area for smoking so that they don't break a rule inside the house, but they do go in the backyard then and smoke if they have to. It's a way of being lenient. I think animals is a question that comes up a lot. Right? We do not want pets. Service animals, yes, and they still have to provide enough documentation to make sure that it's a real thing. Not that you just bought a vest from yes. Amazon. <laughs> Other ways to make money, FYI, this isn't gonna generate you anything, but with storage in the back, if you have enough storage space, there are some investors that are creating storage units. Yeah. Isn't that ironic? And they charge them for those storage spaces yeah. uh, because you can't move into the house with furniture because there's already furniture. You can't move into the house with too much stuff because it's already self set up. So then some people carry a little extra. Where else are they going to store their items? You can go and charge more for that. Okay, so I can, because this is a pretty big space over here, so I can even make like little cages and begin like. Yeah. Yes, sir. Perfect. There's uh, some investors in other states that charge a premium for other additional items. So you want a TV? That's not mandatory through, through pad split. We don't have to give TV. We don't have to give cable. Uh, so because of that, a host are saying, hey, you want a TV? I'll mount it for this much and you'll have this for this much. But it's not normal at the very end of the day. But TVs it'd be a premium. Cheap, though, yeah. so it's kind of the... There's plenty of ways to continue yeah. to capitalize on what we already have. You need like free Wi-Fi, you put Wi-Fi in the house? The yeah. Wi-Fi yeah. is necessary because you're using Wi-Fi locks. Utilities are utilities are owner's responsibility. But even with those returns after your overhead, you're still bringing home, yeah, you know, a, a huge amount. So there is no water hookup, so I don't know if we can move... You think there was chickens in here? I think there were probably. <laughs> Um, I have seen outside units converted into pad splits. We're doing one with ours. Uh, we're re-diverting a plum into the outside unit and giving a kind of a studio room with a bathroom and then giving them access to the main house, probably give them a mini fridge inside. We see that very often with a two car garage, three car garage, where they'll make an additional two or three bedrooms in there. Yeah. Well, I think what you can do with this space is one, I can see if I could bring water out here mm -hmm. for the washer dryer and then that, like that way you can make two rooms in that spot. Ideal. And then here you can just have Hey, I got probably four. You can probably set up four like cages yep. for yep. storage yep. and four additional rentals of storage. Absolutely. I love the wash and dry outside idea because yeah. then it gives it makes it public and then it gives you two rooms and that one bathroom is going to be a premium. So 270, 280, 300 for that one bathroom. Mm -hmm. Same thing for the one in the back. We just also have to make sure that you have that four to one ratio for the rest of the people in the house. Yeah. But I think you should be able to because if you only have six bedrooms, yeah. two already have their own bathrooms, yeah. then four sharing one. Yeah. So you should be fine. Okay. Times yeah. the rest of the month. Other ones, even if it's just 200, it's two, that's a fucking 1400. So 600 times 4.3, $2,580 for two rooms. A month. And then you have your other four at 203, you're looking at $3,440 plus you're looking at $6,000. And a property that would rent for 2200 a month. Yeah. It's a no brainer. 
It's a no-brainer. I was just trying to get the house. I got houses in HOAs. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, no HOAs. No HOAs. Pools, ugh. Okay, it's not that bad. HOA is definitely a, a no go. Gotcha. We don't want that. Okay. Nobody wants HOA. So just gotta get the rehab done and get it moving. And we'll we'll come back and we'll we'll see how it's looking. Love it. Okay. Appreciate you guys. It's exciting. Right, Appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. This Love is it. really cool. Because if our average is 207 and most of our properties right now is Pine Hill, Semron, and Lake Mary, and some in Kissimmee, you're the only one outside of a Castleberry house, and the Castleberry house is borderline almost a trailer house. Yeah. And that's what they're already making above 210 or something like that. Yeah, our properties in 32811 and 32805 are generating on average 58 a month. 5,800 a month. And those are also six rooms. So it's you maintenance. haven't- So there's no reason why Maitland, you shouldn't be charging maybe 210, 220 for the other room. Got the hospital there, Altamont. I4 is Park. right there. You have everything. Close. Ivanhoe is a couple exits away. Really? This is a great area. Really good cool. house. God damn it. I want this house. <laughs> <laughs> so we just finished the walkthrough with Pat Split. And I was already sold before because we talked you know, a couple mm -hmm. different times on some other houses. They just didn't fit because there was HOA or whatnot. Right. But I'm absolutely sold again on making this Maitland house a Pat Split house. And so instead of making 22, 2300 bucks a month, I'm gonna make 6,000 plus. Yep. And even with their small management fee, I'm gonna be out way ahead. Because uh, before, after that, I, I would barely make maybe two or three hundred bucks a month. Yep. And now I'm uh, a couple grand. You're gonna make a couple grand, and you're gonna also capitalize on your storage unit in the back, additional income for you. Every money that you're gonna spend on the rehab, you're probably gonna recoup in, in a very short period of time. Yeah, love it, love it. Cool. I appreciate you guys coming out, explaining it to me. I like to like know exactly what's going on, so yep. appreciate you walking me through everything. We're gonna start the rehab immediately, and then after we get it refinanced out, get as much capital back out. As possible i'll hit you guys up you help me with the rest of the process putting the rooms together furniture stuff Most definitely take it from there let's definitely. do it if you really want to know if your property is a good fit for pat split email us in the email below in the description we're here for you at any time